Welcome, this is El Moro Pigeon Choi. I'm your host, El Moro. And uh, got a little late, it's been a long day. I promised this gentleman that I was going to do a video about teeth powders, a tutorial about how to train the teeth powders or prepare the teeth powders to actually go and bring you birds. So, I am doing this tutorial about thief powders, okay? I have in my hands an encyclopedia. Pigeon Encyclopedia by Wendell M. Levi. This is from 1965. And the, the most interesting thing about this encyclopedia is that it was signed by him. You can tell he was old because the, the handwriting is a little backwards. It says, with every good wish, Wendell Levi. See that? It's, it's written backwards because I have the camera backwards. With every good wish, Wendell Levi. So it's signed by him. This might worth some money. I gotta find myself a pigeon auction. Okay, so here he's got a lot of breeds of pigeon. This gentleman dedicated his life to really do this encyclopedias. This one I I have to be careful because it's it's very uh old you know let me read the copyrights what it says in the copyrights it says 1965 by Levi Publishing Company Inc all rights reserved copyright on the Universal Convention the International Copyright Union Pan American Conventions of Montevideo, Mexico, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, and Habana, Havana, hey, Cuba, hey, my country. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little history about Spanish powders. Here, these are pure breed. These are pure breed they have here, okay? So the first one is a Colillano, okay? Don't like him too much. The beak is a little too long, okay? Um, Got to see him working. The next one is a Jerezano. Jerezano is like a Gaditano, okay? These are pure breeds, pure breeds, okay? Uh... Needless to say, I want to tell you something. See, this right here is a Spanish horseman. This is a horseman. Look at this bird. It doesn't really look like a lot of the horsemen of today. Okay? Because, listen, the origin is in Spain in the province of Valencia. So this looks a little more like a Valenciano. So maybe the Valenciano, and uh, um, I don't want to read all this. Maybe the Valenciano and the horseman have something in common. I'm going to show this to my friend, Spanish horseman, okay? Then you got here the uh, uh, Laudina, Laudina thief powder. This doesn't even look like a Laudina. It looks like a crossbreed, you know, but our pigeons have changed. Like the Gaditanos, they have changed a lot, all right? Like from, from night, look, from like 1970 to now, the Gaditanos have changed. And here you got a Spanish owl powder. I never heard of that. But look, 
you see the long beak? Yeah, when you get a Spanish powder, it's better with the short beak. You see that guy right there? See how little the beak is? Now, it says that this is a Spanish owl powder. Never heard of that. Owl. An owl. Very small beak. And uh, the, the Rafeños are the one with the smallest beak, but these ones have a very small beak. And the oldest race of a Spanish powder is a Rafeño. Now, here you got a Valenciano. It says, uh, Buchon Valenciano, Valencia Cropper, origin in Spain in the province of Valencia. Now, so you got the Valenciano and the horseman. <clears throat> That's the Valenciano. They come from the same province, Valencia. Okay? My ancestors, one of my ancestors come from Galicia, Spain. Okay, so the other Spanish powders are um, from like England and stuff like that. So, the thief powders, the best one, the thief powders, they come from Spain. Okay? Now, all those are pure breeds. What is so good about the Cuban thief powders, which is what we have? The Cuban, uh, see, back in the 50s, uh, people from Spain, they came to Cuba, and maybe even before that, they came to Cuba. Then they brought the birds, the birds had more pout than the ones today. They were thief, they were thief powders, but they were pure breed. So one of the stories says that the Cuban powder come from the Valenciano, the Surita, a Surita is like a clinker to compare it to, and the homing pigeon, okay? So they brought them there around those years, the 40s, the 50s, and then they started mixing them with, uh, they started mixing them with also with the homing pigeon, different kind of homing pigeons that what you have today, a little different. Then what came out of there, they mix them with another powder, not related, and with another powder, not related, until they get the Quinteron, which is the fifth generation of the powder mixed with the homer. They, they, and they did that with the purpose of strengthening the thick powder, okay? So, and then in Cuba, they started doing all these mixes. They no longer, see, in Spain, it's like you have different races, and you got this race, and you, a lot of fanciers say, no, you do not mix, you do not mix this race with this race, because, and then you get a crossbreed. They want pure breed. But with us Cubans, we, a lot of us like the pure breed. But a lot of us cross. They do cross breed with the powder. I'm number one on that. Okay? Because we're looking for different crosses that's going to strengthen the Spanish powder. Okay? So, the Spanish powders in Cuba, the thief powders, they, they are very good. Because of years since the 1940s, 1950s of crossbreeding. So now the best thief powders there is are the Cuban thief powders. Okay? So they did that back then. It's in our blood. I'm doing that today. It's in my blood to do it. My friend Foca is doing that today. My friend Foca, he's got Valencianos with Laudinos. And criollos. Now the criollo is the Cuban Spanish powder. What they have in Cuba now. Which comes, if you go back, if you throw back, it comes from those Spanish powders from Spain. They are all thief powders. But the Cuban thief powder, since we got the, the, the homing pigeon in it, is a lot more agile, is, uh, 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 flies more. And now with the one that I am breathing, which I'm all oh, glory to Yahoo, I'm the first one 
Nobody ever done that. The primogenito. The primogenito is the tippler mixed with the Spanish powder mixed with the homer. And I already did a whole explanation, but I have to explain a lot more because this is a new breed and the 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 primogenitos that are coming out, they are squeaking. And they are, you can see the drive. They have a lot of drive and squeaking. They have a lot of drive. Okay? So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the thick powders of today. They have a lot of good thick powders. Okay? Like Cape Coral have a lot of good Thick powders. Miami, Florida have a lot of good... Uh, anywhere there is a Cuban. Okay? And they know about thick powders. They have good ones. Now here's the thing. Here's the problem. That a lot of... See, I'm old school. A lot of these young guys, they have thick powders. You cannot tell them anything because they know it all. They know everything. Okay? So this is what they do. They get a young thief powder, three month old. They are very hot. They have a lot of drive. So what they do is, they get this young thief powder and they put them al robo or for the steel to go steal all the birds, to go bring all the birds. What's wrong with that? This is this is how you do it. This is how you train a bird. You put them by the, by by themselves in a dark box. Me personally don't like the dark box because as I mean if you live in a in a state where it's cooler, that's okay. You can lock them up, you can put them in there dark. That's okay. But in Florida it's very hot. So you don't want to put a thick powder in there, close up all the time. So what I do, I put them mid-light. I leave it halfway open. So you put this Spanish powder there, this thick powder there, for about two weeks, by himself. All you're going to hear is day and night, you're going to hear is, ooh, 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 ooh. He's calling. He's calling. It's going to get worse because he's calling for a female. He wants a female. Now what you do is you lock everybody up after a week or two. You let them out. And that Spanish powder is going to go out. And he's going to look for a hen. He can go to a place where there's clinkers. He can bring you a clinker. He can bring you a lost homing pigeon. He can bring you a female homing pigeon that is very horny. And that's what the sport is. And then you can bring him in. You can lock him up. And then there you got your bird. Then you put that one away. You let him out again. And then they go out. This is what the young people do. They go out and they are very successful. Bringing birds, bringing birds, and you hear in the pages in Facebook, they're like, oh, this is a 50 capture of this bird. But one day, that bird is going to stay in the other loft with that hen. Why? What are you teaching that bird? <laughs> Every time it brings a hen, you take it out. He goes out to get another one. He brings a hen, you take it out. You don't let him have it. You bring the hen, he brings it, you take it out. So one day he's going to be like, man, come on. All he wants to do is mate. It's like, man, I was born in this house, but these people keep taking, I'm doing it wrong. Because pigeons are very smart. I don't supposed to stay here. I supposed to stay with a female. So one day you're going to lose him. And then the bad fancier is going to say, oh, that's no good bird. The other guy is going to say, hey, I got your bird right here. You want him? Nah, you can have it. That's no good. Wrong. So that guy, is, is it, uh, some people will get him back. 
Some people will say, okay, give me a sack of food. Okay, give me uh, $20. All right, I think that's wrong. If you get a bird, I think you should give it back to its owner. Okay, now, why did this bird get cut? Because it was a young bird. It's a thick powder. There are so many people capturing birds. Thick powders are that. And the thick powders are very good. Why are they getting captured? If they are so good. It's not the bird's fault. It's the fancier's fault. Because they put them so young to for the steel. And in Cuba we say para robo. For the steel, you know, to steal all the pigeons. You put them so young for the steel to bring all the birds and then you never marry them. So now you got those that are the thing they know and they say, well, okay, so I'm just going to marry him and let him have eggs. He have eggs and then you take and then they take the eggs away and they put them and they put the hand away and they put them again for the steel. Might be successful for a long time, but sooner or later they're going to get that bird. Okay? Besides, it's inhumane. Now, how you do it? This is how you do it. You get a bird that is three months, right? When you start flying, let him fly with the flock. Now you got the young people saying, Oh, you are you're not a good fancier, you're not a good handler because you fly your buchones, your thief partners with the flock. It's my pigeons. I do whatever I want. I can fly them with the flock. I don't care what you say. Why do I fly them with the flock? So they don't go nowhere. They got plenty of females. They are getting stuck and really good established in your loft. Now, you get this box for this bird by himself. You let him fly with a flock. Now you get a female, a hen. You put him with this bird. You can do it with, with a female, you can do it with a male. You can do it with a cock or you can do it with a hen. So now you marry this, let's, but we're talking about a cock. Let's do it with a cock. You marry this cock with this hen in this box. That is his box and his only box. You let him have eggs. You let him have babies. You let him breed the babies. You let him molt in this box. You let him have another one, maybe two. Maybe two times he have babies. Now, you can take the hand away. And you can put it for the steel, para robo. Now there, I heard people telling me, well, that's no good because, and then you take the drive away. No, that is not true. On the contrary, you will give, that bird will give more drive because he already had babies there. He already experienced having eggs, having babies. So now having a female, Knowing he's in love with that female, he's in there in that nest, is scratching, they kissing, he misses all that. He only have done that in that box. Now, when you put it from the steel, he's gonna go. He's gonna look, and no matter what, he's not gonna go down anywhere. That's called a, a buchon or a thief powder that is patadura, hard legs. He's not going to go down. That's what you want. You don't want a thick powder that is going to go down. Do they go down sometimes? Yes, they do. They don't get caught. They still bring the bird. And, 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 and you can still get that bird. Do I want them to go down in the other love? No, I don't. When that bird goes down, I want my bird to be flying on top. A good bird do what my primogenito does. 
He slaps his wing in the air. He goes in the air to make that bird come out. The bird is trying to encajonarlo, put him in a box, but the bird sees him. He's not going out. The bird is trying to go to get him, and then it's a battle in the air. Then this bird pulls him to your house. Now, these days they have what's called trampas, bisteros, traps. These traps, you put it in front of the box. Then your bird goes in, and then when the bird goes in the trap, before the bird gets in the box, the trap closes. We that are real palomeros, we are against that. We that are real fanciers, we are against that. It's not good for the sport. It's not good for the bird. Why? Because what is getting that bird is the trap. And they say, well, if it goes in the trap, it shouldn't go. In the yeah, you're right. It shouldn't go down. But some birds, they go right on the door, and they do not go in. You got to give that bird a chance. This is the sport. Now, your bird has to work. That's the beauty. For you to hide and see that bird working and working and working. Now, this bird is going to go out flying. Your bird is going to go out flying after her. And it's going to seduce, seduce in the air. It's going to go down and then bring it again. So in the battle, uh, uh, the battle is in the is in the air. He pulls that way, she pulls that way. She pulls that way, he pulls this way. Man, when I'm saying this, I have my roof in my mouth in Cuba. And she pulls that way and you pull, and he pulls his way. Let's see who wins. Now, a good thick powder with a good seduction, you don't need to run and close the door. When I have birds in Cuba, my bird will get the bird, and I will say, she's already stuck in here. I will not even worry about running and closing the door. I will leave it, and that bird will not go. They actually go out flying, and she will go down first <laughs> because of the seduction of that bird. A good bird that is seductive will, will take a hen that is already married with another cock in the air and bring that hen to your loft and split that hen from that cock and that hen will go with your cock. A good, a good bird. Okay, now, why the crosses? Me, I don't have pigeons here that are close. They are like six miles away. Okay, so I take my Spanish powders, I train them, and it's on the videos, with my homers to go far six miles in the place where there are... Um, uh, uh, other other loft. Who does that? I'm not. Only the people that comes from the school that I come from. El Foca do that. Because in Cuba, we used to take our thief powders far away and let them go for them to come back to the house. Okay? And they will come back from far away. But over here, they don't do that. They're scared. So there's only one guy that did that with me from three miles. He lived six miles from me. I went three miles. He went three miles. My pigeon pulled the bird to my, to my house, but he didn't go to my house. He went back. Good bird. The other bird followed my bird six miles. I mean, no, 4.7 .7 miles. I have it on video on YouTube. He went down on my house and everything. Do you want him to do that? No. But he went, but he went back. At least he went back. He didn't go down. All right? Good bird. 
I, I wouldn't like for mine to go down. Because see, a lot of, and I say Cubans because this sport for the most part over here in Florida is, is Cubans. In Spain, yeah, they do it in Spain. Of course, they do it more with that with pure breed than anything. We do it with thick potters that we mix. When you have a thick powder for the steel, para el robo, you have to marry him. You have to have him in that box. You have to uh, have him have babies. Then you can put it for the steel. You should have uh, hands and you should have cocks. Okay? When we do it, we do it with the thick powders that are mixed. We don't do it with pure breed. Can a pure breed do that? Of course, the thick powder. But the one that we have, the Cuban thief powders, since they're mixed, they have more resistance. They have more stamina. Okay? When we do it, that we do those mixes, the bird can go farther away. If it has tippler, a tippler is known, as my brother Abraham says, he used to let his tipplers go from 100 miles. So they have homing instinct. A tipper is very durable. Uh, very, it's got a lot of uh, strength in the air. More, more than the homer. The homer is a very strong bird too. With even better homing instinct. Okay? So now you put that into a Spanish powder, into a thief powder. Now this bird is going to fly far away. You know? Now, my dog here. The thief powder has to have a little pout. That's why they're called thief powders. But today, they have done so many crossbreeds that a lot of these powders, they don't look like nothing in there. All they care about is capturas, which means captures. Captures. Let me drink a little water. A lot of captures. What I'm looking for and what I'm doing in my crosses is they fly, okay? My, my powders fly, and they have a big pout. A lot of these people, they think, oh, no, they can fly because they have a big pout. Well, guess what? I'm going to prove them wrong. I already proved them wrong. I mean, look at the 18 ounces. My, my pigeon, 18 ounce, he's 70% Gaditano Heresano. That guy, he came back when he was a baby from 2.2 miles. Right now, the other day he flew, disappeared with the with the hand. All right, and he, and he got babies. So when I put him from the steel for the steel, watch. Now, I have a lot of people are asking me for Spanish powders. Okay, move, move, my dog. A lot of people, guys, late. So I'm gonna end up this video. A lot of people asking me for Spanish powders, thick powders. Okay? So I'm doing this video for them. If you get your thick powders from me now, this is what you do. Pair them up, have some babies from them. Okay? Don't try to fly them right away. Alright? And then if you have a flock, let them fly with the flock. Okay? They didn't fly with the flock. Then when you get some babies from them, they fly with the flock, then train them, you know, put train them to bring some birds. Put them in by themselves in a dark box. If it's not too hot, let them go by themselves. And you see, they'll bring you birds. Okay? You just have to 
uh, follow my instructions. Okay? Don't follow these young people's instructions because that's how... Look, if they, they know so much, why they always get... Those birds are always getting caught. Go on Facebook on Palo Meadows, the Cape Coral. Go on Facebook on Reventando el Globo. Go on Facebook on uh, Palomeros de Lehigh, I mean, uh, uh, Palomeros de Miami. And you see, they always, oh, Captura, this is a 51. My bird got 50. And, you, and you're looking at it, and it's a thick powder. Why? Because the owner. Now, this is another thing I want to talk about. There are beautiful birds on the pet shop. But the birds on the pet shop is birds that they have captured already. Can you retrain those birds? Probably. Uh, a lot of those birds, they haven't even had babies. Once you take those babies from the, uh, from those birds from the pet shop and you put them in your house and you give them a good box and you haven't had babies there, I guarantee you, I would say 90% of the time, that bird is not going to go down in another loft. If you stick him good, let him have uh, babies a couple of times. Okay? I'm not saying that he's not going to go down again because he already did it and he already got captured. But it could be that he learned from that. Okay, but I guarantee you that 90% of the time you can make that bird good again. Because a lot of those people, because that bird that is at a pet shop, they get them and then they go and they sell them. They sell them for like $5, $10. I think it gives like $10 or something, you know. Then the pet shop sells it for $20. Some people buy them, some people don't buy pet shop animals, uh, pet shop uh, pigeons. Uh, look, I, I bought a pet shop hen, really good hen, man. That hen, let me tell you something. That's another thing. Once, you know, like a lot of people got eyes for tipplers, eyes for homers. I got eyes for homers and, 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 home, and, uh, and thief potters. When I saw this bird, when I saw Paul Bacera, I knew it was good. Oh, glory to Yahoo. I know they were good. This hen that I have flew with my homers. My homers went far, far away. I have it on the video. Disappeared. Came back 40 minutes later by herself. That's a good bird, man. For, for, homing, uh, for a thief party to do that, that means she flew everywhere. Finally, she found home. She found the house and she came. That's a good bird. So a lot of those birds, you get in the pet shop, don't, don't think they're bad. You just got to get them and have them have babies. Give them his own box. Let them molt there. It's better because those birds are already, those birds are already fly. So if you get them now, adopt them, whatever. When there's a hog season, let them molt in the same box. All right, I recommend not these little boxes that they have for the Spanish powders. Lots of the people don't let the Spanish powders fly in in the in the hawk season, okay? Because it, even it, I mean, even though they can get away from hawk, guys, come on, hawks are fast, they're smart, they high. Look at my bendecido. I love that bird, and I lost it. Okay? I lost them. So, those little boxes. No. I recommend you make a big box, and these are the measurements. I already calculated. 40 inches long, deep. Okay? You put a big door, that way you can put your whole body in there. By 30 inches high by 36 inches wide, which is three feet, 36 inches. Why? In hawk season, you don't fly these birds. 
So if you put them in these little boxes and then they do a lot of exercises, they mess up all the feathers. These are new feathers. They, they are molting. You don't want them to do that. My 18 onzas, look at them. He's in that box. 40 by 30 by 36. When he does exercise, he floats in the air. Shoo, 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 He doesn't touch his wings. It might take a little more room, but you don't want him to, to get those brand new molting feathers. Get all messed up like that. Okay? Now, since that bird at the pet shop already flew, don't worry about it. If you get a bird from me from the pet shop, and man, there are some good birds in this pet shop that I went. Okay? Now, I'm going to be honest with you, but guys, you know I'm transparent. I buy them at that pet shop for $20. I sell them to you for $80. Why? I have to drive 45 minutes there, 45 minutes here. I have to bring that bird here, observe and medicate them. Then I have to get uh, that, bex, that bird and I have to drive and, and mail it to you. Okay? There is no, this is a Spanish, this is the Spanish part of city state. Okay? This is the a uh, uh, thief powder state, guys. The best thief powders, Cuban thief powders in the world are here. Okay, Miami, shh, a lot. A lot of the birds in this city come from Miami. This is what's happening in Miami. People get cut, people get birds of that. They, they cut, they got the birds there, right? So they don't want to give it to the owner. So what do they do? They bring them to Port Charlotte. They bring it to Cape Coral. The birds they got here in Cape Coral, what do they do? They take them to Miami. I sold this bird to this novato, new guy. He didn't know what he was doing. I told him, man, my birds got a lot of drive. Do not put them from the steel. You have to... Uh, <laughs> You have to have them have babies a couple of times. Telling that to one of these young guys is like, is like saying, your mama, they're not going to do it. They don't have the patience. And like Abraham told me, in this sport, he didn't say in this sport, but I'm telling you, in this sport, patience, well, what is it? Is, is the mother, what, what, what was that he said? Oh, Patience is the mother of science. I think that's what he said. You got to be patient. I'm sorry if I messed that up. Patience is the mother of science. You have to have patience. So the guy was not patient. The guy flew him. Guess what happened? I live two, I live, I live two and a half hours from Miami. Three hours. They called me from Miami. Hey, El Moro, hey, I got your bird here, man. Tell me the pedigree. Oh, uh, where does where it come from? Is it a good bird? They bought out a bird shop. Oh, yeah, that bird come from this and this and that and that. You think they sold it? No, they kept that bird. Because these people don't listen. I'm telling you, man, don't do that. See, the thief parties, they have a lot of drive. You got to know how to control that. You got to know how to manage that. They are the, king, they are the kings of seduction. This is what they do. They seduce all the birds. They, they're true lover boys. Okay? So they, they, they seduce birds, man. That's what they do. So you, you got you to gotta train them right. You got to have them have babies to stick them there and establish the bird there in your house. Okay? So my friend Foka. He's got really, really good birds, really good whites. A lot of people are ordering from him. I only have six uh, pairs, and I already have a long list. So what I'm doing is, because I'm not going to be able to get to that list, I am going to his house. He is my partner. I can go to his house with any bird. Because 
See, we since we were little little kids, we together in Cuba. He he in my roof all the time with the birds. So I can go to his loft. I say, man, I like this bird. You know what he says? Take him. You know, but I don't want his birds because I, I I only want six. Or the, I want more homers than Spanish potters. But the Spanish potters that I have are very good. They are carefully selected. I gave him one the other day and look at the video. That bird is not about a month. A uh, month and what? Ten days? That bird had so much drive, he was already seducing. Look at the video. Look at his video. It's a black bird with, uh, and, uh, with the white wings, uh, with the white fly. White fly, black, black. Son of Polbacera and my blue bar that came from six miles. Who does that? Tell anybody, hey, uh, release, uh, let your Spanish powder go from six miles. Only people... And I'm not saying anything. Only people that, that, that have the school that me and Foca had. And you talk to, to a lot of people my age that are uh, that are into pigeons. We talk alike. Same thing, man. We say the same things. But a lot of the today, yeah, change. You have change. Big time, man. Um, so I can go to Foca's house. Like tomorrow, I'm going there to get two white babies to send them to New York. This guy, Cuban guy, Carlos, he knows, he knows about, about uh, thick powders. So when he saw the video, he said, man, I want that. So I'm going there tomorrow to get a couple. So it's 45 minute drive. So if you guys want some, phone me and I go over there and I get some for you guys, okay? They're $80 uh, from FOCA, okay? Any which one that I say, $80. All right, guys. Ooh. Long day. It's very late. It's very late, but I have to do this. I have to do this video. Uh, anything else? Let me think. Any question you guys have, man, about thief powders? I don't claim to know more than anybody, but it just, to me, it comes natural. I've been doing this since I'm a little boy, you know? It comes natural. And I, I have made a lot of mistakes, and that's how I learn. I'm, <laughs> I learn by my mistakes that I have done. Sticking birds, that's why. Sticking birds, I stick birds are uh, really good. Uh, right now, I made mistakes sticking birds a lot in the past, so now I'm, I'm good at it. You know, it's just experience. That, you know, that's all, you know? Uh, so ask me any questions about thief powders. If, I, if it's a good question, I don't know it. I ask somebody. You know, I, I will tell you. I say, oh, wait a minute. Let me, let, let, let me, let me research this, you know? All right, guys, hey, I got to chill. You guys, enjoy your pigeon. Love, man, I hope I don't leave nothing out. I hope I don't leave nothing out. I hope I don't leave nothing out. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, focus bird is Laudino, Valenciano, and... Canarios and Criollos. They got four in there. Okay, that's it. I, I guess I guess I talked a lot. Ah, 44 minutes. Wow. Okay, guys. Hey, you guys uh, love your pigeons. Take care of your pigeons. What else? Love your pigeons. Take care of your pigeons. Love your pigeons again. <laughs> All right, man. It's been too, a long day. And have a blessed day.